Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl, Sin. I am so happy to see you guys and for you guys to be here with me. Um, of course, I do my makeup. I wear NARS, my makeup. Today's look is a very dewy look. Um, yeah, very dewy. I am just, I just have been in this dewy type of mist. Like, I want my makeup to look more like skin. So, this, I put this on, like, earlier this morning. And now, it is, like, dewy. So, um, and I like it. I, I feel like I can, you know, patch it back in and put, like, powder and stuff. But today, we're not here to talk about my makeup. We are here to talk about different subjects, um... If you are new to my channel, I am Sin. I help everyone, I'm going to say everyone, I help everyone try to conceive their first baby, their rainbow baby, and of course, I am, was, for those who don't know me, I was pregnant um, around the same time last year, and I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> I did not know I was pregnant. Um, but however, um, I lost my baby due to food co contamination, but it took me years to try to conceive her and I have finally did. So that was one of the, the goals that I had, um, reach and I want to help you guys meet that goal, but I want you guys to be able to take home your baby, to be able to bring your baby home, be able to have a safe delivery and um you don't go through any miscarriages miscarriages is like 70 percent in the miscarriages um range is 70 percent so that means each pregnancy is a risk of getting a miscarriages there is um 50 percent of women of color that actually deliver their baby 50 percent or 60 percent it's around that range but um there is a high risk of um miscarriages for your very first pregnancy and i just want you guys to be aware of that because that is something that i wish somebody had told me you know and not me learning as i go so that is one topic why we on this topic i would say on the topic but um that is one topic that i do want to talk about as well so when you're in the process of you know trying to get that positive pregnancy test and once you finally get once you finally get that that positive pregnancy test it is a joy of peace because it's like you're thanking God for answering your prayers and and God is always like a on time God. So knowing that you a first time mom and you don't know too much and then you gotta go through this waiting period with the OBGYN. So you're thinking, you know, okay, I can just call them and tell them like Oh, okay, and then they'll tell me to come in. No, it don't work that way. I I was learning as I go. It don't work that way. So, as a first time mom, first time ever getting pregnant or whatever, um, I had to wait 10 weeks um, before I was able to see a doctor. First off, they couldn't fit me in when I was 8 weeks pregnant, like 2 months. So, I had to wait. 10 weeks so I was two months and two weeks at the time when they first saw my pregnancy and to me when I first you know I was getting ready for my doctor's appointment I just bust out in tears I remember getting in the shower and then my friend um that was pregnant at the time she called me and she was like yeah Sin, um she was like, it's, and she was like five months at the time because me and her was like five, five months apart. She was five months ahead of me. 
And at the time, she was already going into her third trimester. I was still in my first trimester, about to enter my second trimester. And um, I just remember that she called me and I just, you know, I just buzzed out in tears. I'm like, what if I'm, you know, it's just like a what if, what if, what if, like, what if I'm not pregnant? Or, you know, even though you got the positive pregnancy test and um, you got the the digital test that literally have the word pregnant. So, in the time frame that you guys are taking the pregnancy test, um, also go right behind it and get the digital. That's what my friend Flo said. She said, yeah, go get the digital one because you want to make sure that you is pregnant. I said, Flo, I got a positive. I got a positive. I'm pregnant. She was like, oh my God, congratulations. I just bust out. I was so happy, y'all. I just didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my God, like God just answered my prayers. I was like, I'm about to be a first time mom. So, um, at that time, I was just so happy. I was so happy. I was so happy. I got the attention that I want, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. When I got ready to get out that shower and I was on my way to the doctor appointment, that doctor's appointment ride, it was like nerve breaking because you don't get your release until they say, yep, it's a baby in the oven. It's a baby in there um, and she's kicking or he's kicking. Da, da, da. It's a baby in there. It's a baby in there. You do not get that um, until then. Then, um, I went back because they said, well, you can come back in three weeks to find out what are you having. And I was like, really? She was like, yeah, once you turn 13 weeks, you can come back and see what you haven't so by that time i was three months yeah i was three months and one week <laughs> i was three months and one week by that time so i went back to find out what i was having and i i could have sworn i was having a boy i could have sworn i was having a little boy but then and the name that i had named my baby was north was northern and northern is either it can be a boy or a girl so i just stuck with that name and um i was like okay my baby name is northern my baby name is northern because it was like okay if i'm having a boy his name is going to be northern if i'm having a girl his name is her name is going to be northern and then i i think i had another name natalie or um London. I had London in, in my mind. I was like, I'm gonna name if I have a girl, I'm gonna name her London. And then if I have a little boy, I'm gonna name him so and so and so. But I was gonna give my baby an African name at the time, but I'm like, I don't want it to be hard for my baby because my baby father would have been, you know, my baby father is Nigerian. So um, my baby would have would have been American slash Nigerian baby. That that's the baby that I was gonna bring in the world, a American slash Nigerian baby. Um, so I was gonna give the baby his last name, but first name was gonna be English. Um, but then London, I'm like, well, everybody kid named London. I'm not. I'm not going to name my baby London. And then I just thought about Northern. And I was like, that is so different. I don't know no baby or anybody child named Northern. Um, that is so pretty. And then I had Northern. Northern was cute. Because the baby name could have been either Northern or Northern. So, Northern, like Southern, Northern. It was going to be spelled just like that. And then, um, you know, I just didn't want no unique 
ghetto name. I'm, mm-mm, mm-mm. They're like, well, why don't you name your baby um, Sasha or um, I said, or Malik? I said, no, that is my baby, and I'm not going to name her he, he or she no ghetto name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, yeah. I was, yeah. So, it's a time limit. I remember when I first started trying to get pregnant, and that was in 2020. And then in 2020, for those who are new here, I found out that I had one block floating tube. Y'all keep asking me, did you have two block floating tubes? Did you have one? I only had one block floating tube and that was on my right side. I never had, I didn't have two. Then I started taking the Chinese herbal tea to help me, um, you know, unblock my tubes or whatever. And then I went to get my procedure 2021 um, of December um, to unblock my tubes. And that's when the doctor said, congratulations, both of your tubes are open. And it literally, after that procedure, the HSG procedure, first procedure that I ever um, been through, um, after that procedure, it let me see yeah after that procedure it only took december they open it january february so it took three months for me to conceive after that procedure um with the help of clomet so i took clomet in february so i conceived in february <laughs> around around this time so last year around the same time i was pregnant i didn't find out i was pregnant until like march the 7th and my baby due date was 11 11 22 so she was supposed to be here november the 11th 2022 and they said that i conceive on february the 18th so I keep up with all that stuff. Like I, I keep up with all that stuff. I still got my baby. Everything, her orchard sound. Um, I have every single thing of my baby. Of my baby, her um, birth, um, birth certificate, all of that stuff. I, I have it all. Her, her birthday and all that stuff. So, um which I keep up with and try my best to keep up with it. Um, cause she would never be forgetting and um Northern is resting in heaven and watching over her mommy. She's watching over her mommy. Grace with grace and peace. Um I wanna say while I'm still on the topic is once you lose a baby and a lot of people don't actually know how you really feel. Grieve as long as you can. As long as you can because I still grieve to this day. There's not a day that go by that I do not think about what if my little girl would have been in this world. She would have been um wow she would have been november december january February. she would have been four months y'all today northern would have been four months years old i mean four months old mm. northern would have been four months so I think about that all the time, like what if me just taking that car seat still to this day, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get emotion. Still to this day, 
Um, still to this day, like, I just think about, like, what if I just had that car seat in the back of my car? <laughs> just having my baby car seat in the back of my car, like, and taking my baby every single where I go. And I know that I was going to be that great mother to her. And still to this day, I feel alone, you know. Because it's just me and my dog. So, I feel alone sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean to cry on YouTube. But... I do and I'm at a age now where I do want to be a mom and I just don't know when <laughs> I know that it's coming and I know that I always wanted to be a mom but I just don't know when <laughs> when is it going to happen oh gosh I cannot believe I'm crying but yeah I, I just don't I just don't know when I'm I'm going to be a mother and I had these outbreaks before but honestly I never knew that I was going to lose my baby not me I didn't think I was going to do that but God just have his ways of doing things and I just I was sick I got sick and that sickness, it was just like, I just had a group of people at my house to celebrate me. And then, you know, to celebrate me and my baby. But at that time, I felt like me and my husband was like distanced from each other the whole time. And when I was pregnant, I felt like I still felt like I was alone. Sometimes, like, even though you in a marriage and during that time I was pregnant, I still felt like I was alone in my pregnancy. Because, not because he wasn't providing or anything. That, I had nothing, nothing to worry about. But being present you know, and doing stuff with your wife and watching your wife as she's pregnant. And I was just like, at the time, I didn't have my dog, I think. No, I didn't have my dog at the time. And I was just home by myself and not really watching what I eat. I'd be so hungry. And there was some times where, you know, we didn't have enough food in the house to um eat what I wanted to eat because so and I didn't really take a look at my paper of what they told me not to eat so I know that you're not supposed to blame yourself but I just wish that I would have been more careful of like what type of food I ate and my baby would have been here today I just wish that I would have been careful because who lose a baby from food contamination when a doctor told me that I lost my baby due to food contamination I was like shocked I'm like well I thought when you're pregnant you can eat everything you can eat anything I see a lot of people eat whatever they want to eat when they're pregnant. They eat in soap and scarge and stuff. And you mean to tell me that I got food poisoning? I was throwing up. I had a high fever. I was shaking non-stoppable. And the... I want to say it wasn't a virus, but the infection that I had caught was E. coli. And E. coli is 
when it gets to a pregnant woman, E. coli is like substance. If you guys don't know what sub substance is, is it shut down your organs. It affects you so bad, it shut down your organs and you can die. So, when the doctors told me that you're very sick, I stayed in the hospital for six days. I did not want to be in the hospital. First time ever being hospitalized. They said, you are very sick. I did not feel sick at all, y'all. I didn't feel sick at all. When I tell you that I was weak, yes, I was weak, but I did not feel sick. But when they said, you're very sick, that you could have died, I just was like, okay. God, whatever you got to do, just let me live. And my baby can be born again, you know. So, at that moment, I was just, like, ready to just give, get this baby out of me. I was ready to get the baby out of me. And I remember um, just praying to God and I remember just praying to God on that last day before I went in preterm labor my water had broke and I didn't know I didn't know what why was my water breaking and um I'm like, what is this? Like, my bed was, like, wet. I didn't know if I should... Well, I knew if I should have went to the emergency room at that time. I told my husband, I said, maybe I should go to the emergency room. And he said, no, no, no. Maybe um, you had a orgasm or something. Honestly, we was having sex at that time. And... As we was having sex, my um, water broke. And this is the story of my miscarriage. Um, as we was having sex, my water broke. And I, he was like, well, maybe you had an orgasm or something. And I'm like, no. I'm like, because it was like, Psh! it did just like that. It made that loud noise and I was like oh my god my water broke and I just started freaking out and then my husband was like no relax lay down your water didn't break maybe it was just an orgasm so he relaxed me he calmed me and I'm like okay let me just lay down my husband don't you know he didn't he don't know um pregnancy stuff so why was I listening to him at the time I should have just took my tail to the emergency room or called an ambulance and told them that my water broke at that time. So, 24 hours, I felt like I was, I was fine. I think I was, I was fine. But 24 hours, he went to work. And I called him and I said, I can't stop throwing up. I'm throwing up, I can't breathe. Can you please come home? I need to go to the emergency room. I was like gassing for breath. I remember y'all, I was gassing for breath. I was gasping to breathe and I was home by myself and I couldn't really breathe. So I was like in my bathroom, like turning a fan on and stuff, like trying to get some air. And then I end up laying down and I just remember like shaking nonstop. <laughs> I 
I just remember shaking nonstop, like shaking like I was gonna have a seizure. I could not stop shaking and my mouth was like Ooh, and I could just feel like, okay. My eyes was kind of like rolling back. I'm like, no, I don't want to have a seizure. No, 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 no. I don't want to have a seizure. Mind you, I'm pregnant at the same time. Still waited. I still waited. My husband came home and I said, could you please drive me to the emergency room? I can't drive. I could not drive. Could you please drive me to the emergency room? I could not drive. I couldn't. If I would have drove myself to the emergency room, shaking like that in labor and didn't know I was in labor, I don't know what would have happened, but I couldn't drive to the emergency room. And I just remember that my pelvis area was hurting so bad. Like, I just felt this pressure. So at that moment, I'm like, something is not right. Y'all keep telling me that this shit is normal. Something is not right. I ended up calling the nurses and they said, oh, just relax. This is normal. You're okay. You know, you seen the doctor yesterday. Your baby heartbeat is fine. Just relax. I told the doctor that I felt like my water had broke. I told her that. I told her. I felt like my water broke. She did not check me. She only checked the baby heartbeat. And she's like, well, the baby heartbeat was at, I was having a girl. So girl heartbeat is always high. So Northern heartbeat normally is like 170 something. And then I had a, I have a monitor that I can put on my stomach to check her heartbeat. And her I, I remember her heartbeat is getting low. Like 130, 130, or 140, or 119, or something like that. So when I got to the hospital, they said, you are in preterm labor. You are not, you you are about to go in labor. Your this baby is not gonna make it. This was they this was their exact words, y'all. I'm laying there in the hospital. Is my baby okay? This baby is not gonna make it. You are in preterm labor. You're about to deliver your baby. That is the worst news that you can ever hear. And I was so sick. I was like, I was kind of calm with it. I don't know why I was so calm. I just knew... Like, Lord, if you take this baby, you wouldn't give me another baby. That was my thought. Just having the faith. <laughs> Whew, just having the faith in God. I said, Lord, if you take this baby, you don't give me another baby. And this is going to be my testimony. And this is my testimony. God <laughs> 
saved my life. And took my baby. And I know that he's going to replace my baby. He's going to bring that same baby. That same baby to me. And I'm just, I'm just waiting for her. I'm just waiting for her. Her or him. <laughs> I'm waiting for whenever she come or he come. I'm waiting for them. And that is going to be my earthly baby. My heaven baby is watching over me. But for those who don't know what happened, I'm telling you this story. Real life story. And this, I haven't really shared to y'all the details of what actually happened but as today because i just want to tell it because last year around this time i was pregnant and i didn't know it and i feel like tonight is just a good time to just share my story maybe it can help someone with to have faith and to know that God is going to bless you with another baby and um, just take cautious like watch what you eat and I remember going to my my um, second checkup earlier last year well at the end of you know and I was talking to another doctor a black doctor the the, the same doctor that helped treat me for, for E. coli and um he told me he said he said don't be afraid to get pregnant again he said, you will get pregnant again. Don't be afraid. And I looked at him. Black, African-American doctor. Tall. Dark. And um, I looked at him. He said, I remember you. He said, I, I, treated, I treated you. I said, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that was you. And um, he said, I remember you. You was very sick. I had no clue. And um, he said, I treated you with the antibiotics. Um, and he told me, he said, that was rare. He said, a lot of pregnancies don't end that way miscarriages don't end that way but he said there was nothing wrong with you I don't want you to think that you know blame yourself or think that something was wrong with you and I'm like okay yeah and then he said he said to me he looked at me and I would never forget he said don't be afraid to get pregnant again he said it's gonna happen. But y'all, I have gave up so many times. <sighs> right, it's gonna happen. It, I mean, it happened in 2021. I mean, 2022. God just has his own timing, and I just don't want y'all to forget that because no one understands when you lose a child, and I see all these babies, these beautiful babies, and I just try to picture my baby, or try to shake the baby hand like, <laughs> All right.
y'all stay blessed and thank you for watching this video and um stay blessed don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel you will love it here and i'm glad that i shared my miscarriage story time with you guys and i hope you guys enjoyed it <laughs> don't cry with me mm -mm. these are like happy tears that i am happy to be alive you know what i've been through you won't cry with me you'll be joyful you'll be joyful and fruitfulness because after all you've been through, life is not perfect. But God just pick the strong ones that can survive it to go through things. Yeah. All right. So I guess I will talk to you guys another day and thank you guys again don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel you will love it here um grace and peace everyone y'all stay safe out there and stay safe all right <laughs> love you guys bye